and the crew would all be like, fuck, shit. I would pay to do this, you know? I think people do pay to do things like this. People, I don't know if they do it here in France, but they do it in Britain and in America. Like, you go to a theatre or, or a, you go to a warehouse and there's like 20 actors and like there's 100 audience members, but you've got to get involved and you've got to make a decision. Like, do we go left? Do we go right? How do we get out of the room? Oh, quick, we've got stuff to solve. And it's like, it costs 80 bucks and lasts 20 minutes, do you know what I mean? This, I got paid to do this and it lasted two weeks. It was like an acting exercise designed just for me for two weeks. I mean, whether the film was good or not, it didn't matter. I would kill to do something like this. I could see his clothes were still in there. His bag was still in there. We continue to interview everybody who has come into contact with your son. Ethan! I got there the day before. I went to bed. I woke up at 4.30. I got in my character's car. I drove it to the location I was given. When I arrived, there was a loch. There was a ferry. I drove the car onto the ferry and there was cameras there. And I was like, right, we're starting the movie. And the ferry set sail across the loch in the dark with the moon and the mountains and the river. It was incredible. And um, when we got to the other side, I drove off and the cameras followed me with the car. And I drove to the next location and I was there with Claire. And my son had disappeared. It was a campsite. And there was police in the water and like, I mean, this was all the first like two or three hours. It was an incredible way to start any film, but this one just, the whole experience was like that from start to finish. That was part of the job of the crew was to be able to roll with it and literally roll with it, roll the camera with it, and adjust depending on where I went. That was kind of fun. And you could tell as well, like, sometimes you'd be doing stuff and you wouldn't even feel the crew. And then at other times, you'd f make a decision to do something and the crew would all be like, fuck, shit. And you could really feel the crew. <laughs> so you'd be like just doing your thing, but you just get this tension, this frisson of like, oh, oh, he's got, oh, he's going doing something else, quick, move, move, move. And that was always quite fun to do that to them. If I turned left, sometimes when he said cut, I'd be like, James, thank you, that was great. Could you possibly do it again and not turn left? And I'd be like, I understand. And you know, that was from literally, like sometimes I would go the wrong direction, <laughs> but sometimes I would take it the wrong direction emotionally or dialogue wise, I'd maybe say something that was impossible for the story. I mean, there was one time I think I said something that my character wasn't meant to learn for like another 20 minutes in the movie, but I'd already kind of figured it out. And he was like, please, I know you figured it out, but the character can't know this for another 20 minutes. You'll understand why tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? So there was a few things like that. They were kind of improvised, yeah, which was difficult. Um, they were probably the most, they were the only scenes that I found hard to do because you were aware that you were about to start improvising something violent where someone could get hurt. So you stop being free, you stop being quite so immersed and you start thinking, right, how am I going to do this? I'm going to hit him, but I don't want to hit him. The first takes were generally very improvised and then we would kind of refine things a little bit. 